This video is going to go through the very beginning of Chapter 8. And if you remember, Chapter 8 started with a section that reviewed all of the techniques of integration that we have learned over the course of Calc 1. So looking at anything from U sub to logarithms to exponential, inverse trig, and a little bit of everything, and some of the algebra strategies that help us if we're getting stuck and not fitting into a basic model. So that's what this video is going to cover. I have three problems, these two that you're looking at and one that's on another slide. That's going to go through some of the common techniques to help you integrate things that maybe aren't quite as straightforward right when you look at them. So the first one, a lot of times when you look at this, you want to think about u being the bottom, being what's under the radical. So if we say that u is 36 minus x squared and du is negative 2x, what you'll notice is on the top you do have a 2x, but you also have extra stuff. You have the 5. This is one where the strategy is to pretzel it or split up the numerator. We did one like this in class where you want to turn it into two integrals, one with 2x over 36 minus x squared under the radical and then one with 5 over the square root of 36 minus x squared. The first part of this pretzel is very similar to what we already started. We did the u sub, we let du be negative 2x, we're going to have a negative adjustment. You already have the 2, so your adjustment is to either multiply or divide by a negative. So you have a negative u to the negative 1 half because it's in the bottom under a square root. We integrate it power 1 greater divided by that power you get 2u to the half. And then your final answer to this piece once you put u back in is negative 2 times the square root of 36 minus x squared or you can write it as 36 minus x squared to the 1 half power. So that's the first half of the integration. The second piece, you can't do a basic u substitution because you won't have du in there. Instead, what you have is you have an inverse trig. And that's going to happen a lot of times whenever your numerator is a constant as opposed to having a variable in it. This is arc sine because the bottom has a radical and it's number minus variable. That order has to happen with sine. We let u be x because that's the variable that was squared. We let a be 6 because that's the number that was squared. Um, dx is just 1 or dx, so we do not have to adjust in any way, or du is just 1 dx. The 5, we don't need it, so we're going to pull it out front. So we're going to have 5 out front. There is nothing else out front. Uh, arc sine does not have a 1 over a like arc tangent does, so we just have the 5. Arc sine of x over 6 plus c. Very common problem, the ability to spread it out, separate it into two separate problems where one is a u sub and the other one is an inverse trig piece. We did sim one similar in class. The one we did in class had an arc tangent in it instead of an arc sine, but it was the same idea. The second one. The second one I wanted to show you because most students, when they first look at it, especially when we've been in Chapter 8 for a while, confuse this with integration by parts because we spent two days talking about when we have x's and e's put together, we can make a table, we can do a tabular method, we can use integrate by integration by parts to integrate it. And they kind of jump to that conclusion and turn this problem into something that it's way more complicated than it actually is. This is just a u sub. The reason that we don't need integration by parts is because if we let u be the exponent, 3x squared, du is 6x, I have an x in du, I have an x in the original problem. So there is no need to do any type of integration by parts because u substitution works. Now we have to look at the adjustment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 5 out front and then I'm also going to have a 1 6 adjustment. So I end up with a coefficient of 5 6. And then my integration is e to the u, which is our easiest integral to do because the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So my final answer is 5 6 e to the 3x squared plus c. Wanted to go through one like that because that is one that students tend to jump to a conclusion that it must be something very complicated because it's in chapter 8 when actually it was a problem that we could have done back in chapter 5. The last problem is also one that we would have done in chapter 5 at the very end, one of the last things we did before winter break. This is one where if you try to do a u substitution with the bottom, it will not work because the derivative of the bottom is a 2x plus 10. We can't do a plus something minus something because we don't have a variable on top and we don't want to be introducing variables and subtracting variables. This is actually one that is completing the square. This is one that once we complete the square, we can get it to look like an arctangent integral. To complete the square, we're going to take half of that number, half of 10, which is 5, and square it. So we get 25. So I have x squared plus 10x plus 25. And basically what I'm doing is I'm borrowing from the 40 that's already there. So I needed 25 to complete the square, which means I have 15 left. So we're going to write it as x plus 5 squared and then a plus 15. So let me rewrite my integral looking more like an inverse tangent. 
and then we'll identify all the parts of my integral. Now it looks a lot more like an inverse tangent integral. u is x plus 5, du is just 1 or dx. A is, n 15 is not a perfect square, so I'm just going to write A as the square root of 15. It, that does not simplify. If it does, you can, but you do not have to to get full credit. My 3 in the numerator is going to come out front because I don't need it. My coefficient is going to be 3 over radical 15. If you want to rationalize it, you can, but with the AP test, they do not require rationalizing to get credit, so I'm going to leave it as is. Arctangent of x plus 5 over radical 15 plus c. So these three problems take you through multiple techniques. We have a long division, we have basic u sub, inverse trig in a couple environments, inverse trig in the first problem and in this problem, and looking at just basic power rules, pretzel to split things up. So it gives you a variety of problems and things to look for when you're doing problems. And so you don't try to turn this into a problem from later in the chapter, realizing that you don't always have to use some of the higher level techniques of integration. There are algebra and different strategies that will help you.